Hello and welcome back to the pool. I'm the Gareth Major and this is a Let's Play in HMS London, the premium tier 5 British cruiser. Now, a Let's Play slightly different to the review where I'm basically playing the ship and explaining why I'm doing what I'm doing as I'm going along rather than reading out of a notebook. So, um, thankfully, I should be a little bit less distracted. If the review does interest you, then it will be carded on the end screen and also carded top right now. Now this is a game of capture the base on fault line. Enemy team is a Fabuki and Agil, Krasny Krem, Emily Batang, Nuremberg, Leander, Dallas, Fuso, New Mexico. So it is a tier four and five game, but it's mostly tier fives. I've spawned on the right flank with a Icarus and a Pensacola. So I think we're just gonna try and do what we can in order to slow the enemy down before they come steamrolling over us, because usually this is their strong side where they end up with about six ships spawning. So we've got ourselves into a decent position and we've got to pop our first smoke screen. And as you'll notice I do have four smoke screens. Well as promised in the review I have gone for a slightly different commander build or something that I'm a bit more normalized to or used to and that is my chain smoking um, commander build. Uh, that will be down in the description along with the uh, modules that come well that I'm using in this game should that interest you. Also, as promised, um, time for a bit of a comparison of HMS London versus HMS Exeter. Uh, the reason being is both HMS London and HMS Exeter are British heavy cruisers at tier 5. Um, now, HMS London is a county class class A heavy cruiser, whereas HMS Exeter is a class B York class heavy cruiser. So um, they are different classes um, for different reasons. So going through it in comparison, survivability, obviously HMS London does have more HP uh, base and HP pool simply due to her monster repair parties and her larger size mean that she has more HP overall. Um, however, one thing to note, uh, as you will be probably seeing now, is London is quite big and she has a lot of freeboards, and that is something that you don't have on Exeter. Exeter is quite small and quite low in the water. Now, why does size matter when it comes to survivability? Well, obviously, the bigger you are, the easier you are to hit, especially when you're in a smokescreen. Um, at the moment, quite a lot of players will have to have a chance at their firing into smoke and seeing if they can can hit you. I don't blame them. I mean, you got to learn somehow, somewhere. And so, with London being bigger, she is just that slightly easier to hit while in smoke. Now, going on to artillery, uh, obviously the big difference that everyone's going to notice is that London does have one additional turret, and therefore she does actually have more DPM to throw down range in a game. However, um, the Exeter does have a faster reload, so the reload on London is 15 seconds and the reload on the Exeter is 12 and a half seconds. Well, why does two and a half seconds of reload matter? Well, if you think about them sailing towards each other, only able to bring their front two turrets onto target, um, Exeter is going to have more DPM out of her front two turrets versus the London. So that's one interesting thing. Um, however, obviously London will have more DPM sailing away because Exeter's only got one rear turret. But also, that slightly quicker reload can make or break an engagement at, the, at close range. Um, being able to chuck it out um, at the last minute uh, against, say, a DD pushing your smoke screen or something like that could make or break an engagement. And so obviously that's quite a nice little ability to have. Oh, there we go. Now, the the other one to note, obviously, um, is going on to torpedoes. Um, so the difference between them, statistically, um, London does have quadruple torpedo launchers, whereas the Exeter has triple torpedo launchers. But the other big um, difference between them is that Exeter's torpedo launcher reloads 34 seconds quicker than London's. So London's reload time on her torpedo launchers is quite slow, uh, especially per launcher and per tube. And that's why I always like to bring both those stats out uh, when I do the reviews. 
Now, the other one is that Exeter does have slightly higher damage from her torpedoes, so again, they're going to hit slightly harder. Exeter's torpedoes are longer range, they are faster, but they do have slightly worse detectability. So that's two things to bear in mind there. The other one is that Exeter has better torpedo angles. If you look at the London's torpedo angles, and you can compare that to the Exeter's torpedo angles in uh, Wales Weekly that came out yesterday, you'll notice that Exeter can fire her torpedoes a lot more farther forward and aft uh, when she's trying to do single launch. Now that additional angling is quite a nice little ability. Um, when you're having to do in kiting maneuvers or having to make maneuvers within your smoke screen. So that's two things to take away from the torpedoes. Now obviously going on to maneuverability, um, they are the same speed, but Exeter due to her smaller size does have a smaller turning circle and then also to add on to that is that uh, Exeter does have a faster rotor shift, so Exeter kind of wins the maneuverability category as well in comparison. And the other one is, I, I haven't been able to obviously confirm it, but it does kind of feel that um, Exeter does have a slightly faster acceleration in comparison. But that's based on Phil, and I haven't been able to really confirm it with any kind of stats or anything, unfortunately. Now, going on to concealment, Exeter is, of course, a slightly better. However, how much better she is, is simply just a matter of 100 meters in detectability from air and from sea. Um, so it's not exactly uh, buckets of distance between them. Going on to consumables, they have exactly the same smoke screen, so there's nothing really to compare here. It's apples for apples, really. Um, now, obviously, London does have that monster repair party, which does heal 555 HP per second for 20 seconds. So that means um, from HMS London, you will be getting 11,060 HP per repair party. Comparing that to Exeter's uh, 4,116 HP per repair party, so obviously London's going to walk away the winner from there. Going on to Sonar, now this is quite a big difference. In fact, it's probably the biggest difference you have. HMS London comes with free number, long duration, short range, short reload defensive sonars, I guess you could say, where they can pick up ships at 3.5 kilometers and torpedoes at 2.5 kilometers. However, that detecting uh, torpedoes at quite a short range um, isn't. It doesn't give you super amounts of time to react uh, just due to your kind of poor maneuverability at low speed slash low acceleration at low speeds, obviously. Whereas Exeter comes with two times long range German style um, radars, offensive radars. Now these can pick up ships at 5.1 kilometers and torpedoes at 3.5 kilometers. So I'd say Exeter's sonar is better because it's more aggressive, I guess you could say, um, which means that uh, you can almost use it as a mini radar. Um, when destroyers get close, whereas um, London sonar seems to be a, a bit more of a defensive sonar, something that you use just to generally protect your area, um, but it's not exactly going to give you lots of response time either to, to incoming torpedoes. In fact, it's a less range than most sonars at the tier for the cruisers, so that's something to bear in mind. So all in all, that has been the general case of the differences between the two. I think they both have a place in the game. They both have very similar but slightly different playstyles due to their consumables and things like that. And I think from me hopping between the two and seeing how, which one I kind of like, I think if if I had to pick one for a, say a season of ranks, you know, a, a kind of competitive environment where I need to know. A cruiser like the back of my hand or I need to know that it, I, it's something I can rely upon. I would think I'd much prefer to take HMS Exeter into a, a game of ranked over HMS London and the reason being is that Exeter does have that better maneuverability uh, which I really do like when you're in a smoke screen because it means I can quickly swish uh, between my 
uh, port and starboard sides in order to get torpedoes out. Um, also because she's smaller she's harder to hit when in the smoke screen. Also because again of her smaller size she has more maneuverability within that smoke screen. She's got more wiggle room. Also with Exeter I do like her in better torpedo angles and her better torpedo range. Um, I think the torpedoes go hand in hand with um, Exeter and what I do in her. Um, so I think in those cases, so here I would have already been able to get torpedoes out from Exeter but I'm having to really swing it around until I'm nicely broadside onto the enemy uh, before getting those torpedoes out. So yeah, I think I think at the end of the day, I'm definitely going to be uh, a person who's going to pick the Exeter over the London. So for those of you who have Exeter and feel like maybe the London's going to steal the thunder from the Exeter, then I wouldn't be too concerned. I think uh, Exeter's going to have a good place in the game for a good while. Well, we've been slowly mopping up the team, managed to rack ourselves up 70,000 damage, and the enemy team's basically cooped up in their um, capture zone. So, time to crank out the speed. We've obviously used all four of our smoke screens. Um, so, that's not too bad, and considering we've only lost 7,000 damage ish. Nope, oh, they're down to one ship, and not a lot left. So, as you can see, um, I've been using my original tie whip build during this game and I really do enjoy having that kind of ability to always have a smoke screen ready to pop. Now I do think the original tie whip build does suit the London quite well as well. Um, with London and her two monster repair parties, I don't think you need any more than two repair parties. Um, now with Exeter with her smaller repair parties, yeah, you could probably justify going for trying to get three repair parties with fully packed. But I just like the uh, the smogathon on a cruiser, especially a smoke cruiser, I should say, and the ability to have those fast reloading, longer range torpedoes as your backup. Oh well, quite a tidy game, 70,000 damage. Got myself 12 fires. Didn't really get any torpedoes into the water. The enemy didn't really get that close, to be fair. Looking at the scores on the doors. Yeah, came in alright on my team. I'm quite happy with that. Along with the Icarus that I spawned alongside. He did a good job doing a lot of spotting. And that's what I like. I like to see destroyers who do their spotting. Because that then means that I can then use my smoke screen. And then it means that they can focus on torpedoes and spotting. I can focus on smoking and shooting. And it means that... Together, we end up getting quite a good score because they're getting a lot of spotting damage and I'm getting the damage, which always makes quite a good uh, combination. That's why I think a smoke cruiser and a destroyer is a really strong division, um, especially if you've got good communication between you two. Although in this game, complete random, um, and obviously it's just down to the quality of the destroyer that you spawn in alongside sometimes. Uh, going to the economy, obviously made myself a pretty penny, being it's a tier 5 premium cruiser, uh, or tier 5 premium I should say, uh, where the discounted um, ship service cost obviously then allows me to rake in a bit more credit. So all in all, quite happy with that game, and quite happy with that let's play and that comparison of London to Exeter. If you've enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up. If you enjoy this kind of content, feel free to subscribe and check out some of our other content carded on screen now. If you're already a subscriber, I'd like to say thank you very much, guys and girls, for your support and contributions to the channel. As always, you can send in your own game captures to the email address in the description down below, along with the ship modules and the commander build used during this video. Also down in the description is a link to Patreon, should you wish to support the channel. I'd like to say thank you to the Patreons, whose lovely names are appearing on screen now. Until the next time, I'm the Gareth Major, and back to the port.